I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Ormond, but I had to see you alone, privately. It's urgent. You sounded very upset on the telephone. What is it? You better have a look at these papers, sir. Without delay. You wait here. I'll make my excuses. Manford! Uh, Manford! Manford, where are you? Mickey, what's the matter? He was standing right here a second ago. Who? Thomas Manford, my chief executive. simply disappeared. I know how it must sound. It sounds to me as though Mr. Mumford suddenly changed his mind and left. No, there was a party on board the Quest, and we had security guards on the dock. They would have seen him. Captain Anteros and his men searched every inch of the ship. Why did you come to me, Mr. Roman? I mean, if you suspect foul play, why not the police? If the competition got wind that my chief executive had disappeared just like that, could be pretty rough sailing for Armand Shipping. The competition, of course, being Mr. Harold East. The rivalry between the East Wind Line and Armand Shipping has not exactly escaped the attention of the media, sir. Uh, Archie, perhaps Miss Elton, would care to see the plant room, eh? Well, it's uh, the best show in town if you're partial to orchids. What woman isn't? Then you're in for a treat. Now, Mr. Roman, what was in the papers you found on the deck? That's even more puzzling. Just the monthly report. Nothing out of the ordinary. Hmm. Orchids are a strange hobby for a private detective. Oh, with Nero Wolf, it's more than a hobby. While he's growing orchids, who does the investigating? Well, I do the legwork. Somehow you strike me as more than just a leg man. What you mean? It's not just a hobby. More like a religion. I had to learn just for self-defense. These are phalaenopsis. They're beautiful. By the way, did you know Thomas Mumford well? I've never met him. Oh? I have nothing to do with the Ormond line, Mr. Goodwin. Not in a business sense. I'm what you might call a passenger. 
certain privileges. And the accommodations are first class. Do I detect a certain disapproval? Have I scratched a moralist? Oh, uh, no. It's just that you, uh, well, you seem too bright, too. Sedan. I couldn't get the license plate. My orchids. Battle casualties. Oh, no. Wholesale destruction, but you have no idea who might be involved. Mr. Kramer, we live in a violent age. Senseless brutality of violence. What case are you working on? If I were on a case, it would be, of course, confidential. My guests here were simply admiring my orchids when we were so rudely interrupted. I appreciate the 18th Precinct's interest in my welfare. And I assure you that I will do everything in my power to help you stamp out crime in the streets, especially the streets. But now, if you do not mind, sir. Theodore! Yes, sir. We will have to do whatever we can to make the survivors comfortable. Of course, sir. Well, whoever did this meant to kill you. Far more important than that, sir. They could have put an end to generations of priceless hybrids. Good day, Mr. Kramer. Thank you for keeping my confidence. Rule number one, sir, the client is always protected. Does that mean you'll take the case? I've been working on it since the first bullet took the life of the first flower. Archie will see you out. Good day. Good day. Horrible, horrible. Theodore, turn the thermostat to maximum, get sheets to protect them from direct frost, and I want the glaciers here at once. Tell them to bring as large a crew as necessary to complete the job tonight. I will not permit them to suffer a single night of exposure. Of course, sir. What now? Mr. Mumford had an apartment. Apartments often hold clues. You don't happen to have a key. When did that stop you? Need me? Ring 510. This way. Nothing running. I told you, Mr. Mumford ain't been here. Well, the leak must be in the wall. This will take a little time. OK, I'll be in the lobby. Eklund case. I remember it well. We located her stolen Picasso in a shorter time than it took us to collect her fee. I'll assure you of that. But why should Mr. Mumford be interested in my career? Well, maybe he needed help and was checking you out. Oh, what sort of help? Well, maybe, uh, maybe Harold East made him an offer. Mumford wanted to change sides, but he was scared. Of Nicky Orman? Yeah. I get the feeling our client's not exactly Mr. Nice Guy when he's crossed. Rule number two, Archie. Never criticize a client until his check is cleared. And then only when he's mean to his grandmother. Meanwhile, find out if Harold East does indeed know something about our missing will-o'-the-wisp Thomas Mumford, eh? Right. you what about Tom Mumford? I know you showed me some ID, but anybody can buy a set of credentials for a couple of bucks. Who are you? What are you after? 
The name's still Archie Goodwin, and I still work for Nero Wolf. All right. Who does Wolf work for? Nicky Ormond. Ormond? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Nicky lose Mumford somewhere? That please you, Mr. East? That Orman's got troubles? Why not? That's a barrel of laughs. Poor Nicky must be scared to death. He can't find his way to the bathroom without Mumford. You wouldn't happen to know where Mumford is. Why? You think I stole him? Let me tell you something. I'd love to. That would just about sink the Orman fleet, which would give me about a week's worth of pleasure. No, I didn't touch Mumford. Wolf thinks he may be dead. Let me tell you something, smart guy. Don't try to pin anything on me. Or your arms and your legs are going to wind up in different places, and you can tell that to Nero Wolf, too. The door you came through is the one you use on the way out. It's been a pleasure. She's finally coming out of it, Theodore. But she suffered a terrible shock. We would be wise not to feed her for a while. May I suggest we increase the fertilizer, sir? What? More fertilizer? Absolutely not. Just moisture, Theodore. A hint of water. If we overdo it, she will get fertilizer burn. You should know that. I am aware of the danger, sir. Well, here I am, back from the wars. Well, what happened to you? A car tried to park on me. Archie, I'm beginning to think you are accident prone. I do not mean to sound uncaring, but in yesterday's assault, we lost four of our finest specimens, and several others are on the critical list. Including me. Did you get anything worthwhile out of Harold East? Only that he hates Nicky Orman's guts. He denied any knowledge of Mr. Mumford's whereabouts, of course. Yeah, and he threatened me. We're not supposed to look in his direction. Temporarily, we shall avoid Mr. East. Mumford disappeared from the deck of a boat. Boat people usually know what happens on boats. So in the morning, Archie, go aboard the boat. And in your present condition, I should think the sea air would do you some good. As long as the boat's tied to the dock. <laughs> now, Theodore, you've had a moment to think about it. I'm sure you will agree now that being in the presence of too much fertilizer does cause a burn. Unfortunately, sir, that's the story of my life. Yes. <clears throat> Where do you think you're going? Captain Enteros? You didn't answer me! I'm working for Mr. Ormond. The name's Goodwin. I'm investigating the disappearance of Thomas Mumford. Investigate some other time! Uh, look, I asked Mr. Ormond. He'll okay it. We're leaving for Bermuda tonight. The ship's been cleaned up. Nobody comes aboard. Help Mr. Goodwin ashore. Captain! Mr. Goodwin is a guest of Mr. Ormond's. Nobody told me. Well, I'm telling you now. Mickey's on the phone to London. It may be a few minutes. We'll be waiting on the main deck. You don't waste any time. We weren't expecting a report for days. You're not getting one. Don't tell me you and Nero Wolf struck out. It's like medicine. The things you rule out are just as important as the positive findings. 
Is that what Mr. Wolf says? His very words. I understand you're off to Bermuda. Just a short cruise. We'll be back in a few days. Another trip? No, I've been thinking about it. I've decided there's not much future in travel. I know. But if you're a born passenger, what can you do? I tried being a model, then an actress. And I found on the whole I made a very good passenger. Seems like such a waste. Good afternoon, Mr. Goodwin. I have heard about your run-in with Captain Anteros. Please accept my apologies. How can I help you? I want a job in your organization. A chance to talk to the people who knew Mumford. Might lead to some answers. All right. We'll go right to the source. The office of the chief executive, Mumford's office. Well, who's running the show now? Mumford's assistant, Martin Kelsey. Goodwin? So you're a friend of Mr. Armand's? Well, you said with Mr. Mumford on vacation, you might need some help. You mentioned any specific job? That's it up to you. You're in the business. Marine Corps. What outfit? 4-6, supply sergeant. Mr. told you Mumford was on vacation. That's what you said? Mumford's a workaholic. No family, no friends. Work, period. You don't think he's on vacation? If Mr. Orman said Mumford's on vacation, he's on vacation. How did a Marine Supply Sergeant learn about ship logistics? Look, I'm gonna level with you. All I know about logistics is handing out boots and helmets. But I need a job. Now, I'm fast, and I can learn. You figure I'm an old man buddy, so I'm going to help you out, huh? There's no free ride, Goodwin. Boss or no boss, you're going to work your butt off. Whatever you say. You're going to learn global logistics. And you're going to learn to keep your mouth shut. Clear? Loud and. But don't rely on that Semper Fi jazz, old Marine buddy. And don't ever forget that this office is top secret. Nobody gets in, and no information gets out. Clear, old man, buddy? If I find you any, better pray you can float. I'll keep my Bible handy. Well, there's one thing that might lead somewhere, a set of files. Files? Mumford's office. Now, Kelsey has the key. And it never leaves his person. There has to be a reason. What is your appraisal of Kelsey? I'd say he doesn't miss Mumford. He's happy about the promotion. Enough to have arranged the disappearance? Well, like I said, the answer might be in the files. Use your ingenuity, Archie. It rarely fails you. You know, land me in the morning. After you.
an excellent dinner, Mr. Wolf. Dad, Fritz always does well with veal. I thought the touch of Blanche Slivet Armand tonight was inspired. Look out, Mr. Wolf. Mickey hires the top chefs of Europe. He'll have Fritz on his payroll before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> I shall regard anything beyond my compliments to the chef as an act of piracy, sir. <laughs> Again, Mr. Kramer? I'm terribly sorry. I told him you were engaged, but... All right, this has gone far enough. Now, Wolf, shooting up your plant room is one thing, but now it's murder. Murder? Martin Kelsey. What? When? I found him at the office an hour ago, in the shower. He wasn't there to get cleaned up. May I have a word with you, sir, in the den? It isn't necessary, Mr. Wolf. It's now clearly a police matter. They should know everything. My name is Nicholas Ormond. I know who you are, Mr. Ormond. A week ago, Thomas Mumford, my chief executive, disappeared. I engaged Mr. Wolf to help me find him. Well, obviously, someone doesn't want him found. Someone also almost destroyed this house, almost killed Goodwin, and succeeded with Mr. Kelsey. Now, why? If I knew the answer, Inspector, I wouldn't have hired Mr. Wolf. What were you doing at that office tonight? Will you please tell him he's free to talk? I thought there might be a clue about Mumford in the files. And was there? I didn't have a chance to find out. I found Kelsey's body, and right after that, I got slugged. I guess that'll have to do for now. If you need anything further from me, Inspector, it has to be before tomorrow night. Uh, we are taking a cruise to the Caribbean. Could I use your phone, Mr. Wolf? I would like to talk to Captain Antares. Of course, sir. We will see Mr. Kramer off. You'll excuse me, my dear. Now that everything is out in the open, Mr. Kramer, feel free to call upon us at any time, eh? Nothing is ever out in the open with you, Wolf. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, uh, I know. Fritz will see me out. Precisely. He would never leave. Now, Archie, what was in the files? From what I could see, there were reports on the new Santa Rico oil fields. Santa Rico? The Caribbean, huh? I suspect Mr. Roman's trip tomorrow is not purely of a pleasure. Yeah, except uh, I can't be sure of this. I got zapped and my camera was taken before I could get it down pat. Looks like Harold East has the Santa Rico oil contract sewn up. Interesting. No, Captain. If I'm not aboard by sailing time, leave as scheduled. I can always catch up with you by helicopter. Goodbye. Mr. Rollins, could you tell me about your involvement with the Santa Rico oil fields? How did you know about Santa Rico? Well, if I did not know, sir, you would be overpaying me. It's something Mumford was working on. We were trying to get a contract to develop the fields. I've been led to believe that Harold East already has the contract. Did that have anything to do with Mr. Mumford's disappearance? Near a Wolf's office? It's for you, Mr. Orman. Thank you. Hello? Tom? Where are you? It's Mumford. I'm pressed for time, Mr. Orman, so I'll have to make this quick. Tom, we've been going crazy here. What happened to you? I still have a couple of things to check out. Kelsey can handle any problems that come up. On the boat, you wanted to talk to me. When I came back on deck, you were gone. What happened? I can't discuss it now. Where are you? I'll call you when I'm ready. Well, at any rate, it appears that Mr. Mumford, the key to the puzzle, is still among the living. Tell me, Archie, what do you think? Oh, a composition's okay, but I can't say much for the exposure. I am not entering it in a contest, Archie. I hired Saul Panzer to take it. He was down on the docks at dawn this morning. Why? Did you think Mumford would show up in the picture? I shall ascribe your temporary slow wittedness to the blow you suffered on the back of the head. I wanted to compare that photograph with the work of professional photographers like this. This is the quest at Monaco. A 
And here she is in the Greek islands. You will note in both pictures how high she rides in the water. Now take another look at the shot Saul took this morning. Note carefully that she is all the way down to the Plimsoll mark. So, uh, they've got a lot of cargo aboard. On a cruise ship? Oh, what do you suppose they've got that weighs so much? Think, Archie. Is there conceivably anyone on the quest who might think highly enough of you to tell you? Give me a minute. Mm, this looks positively glamorous and I'm starved. I shouldn't be here, you know. Nikki'd be furious. I was surprised when you said yes. I flattered, naturally. I'm impulsive as well as hungry. <laughs> What time do you sail? Five. Good. I'll drive you down to the ship after breakfast. Aren't you, Goodwin? Is that your best offer? Well, frankly, I need your help. So breakfast wasn't the first step on the way to an afternoon of total abandon. Sorry. Nobody's perfect. Will you help? To do what? I have to get down into the hold of the quest. You should have asked Nicky to breakfast. Well, I didn't want him to know. And you trust me? Yes, I do. I don't know why, Archie, but I find that very sweet. Look, Susan. <laughs> Forget it. I shouldn't have asked you. I mean, there could be trouble, and I don't want to get you involved. No, I want to help. It's time I thought of someone besides myself just to find out how it feels. This could be the start of a whole new career. Susan Elton, secret agent. Does it pay well? No, look at you. Of course it doesn't. <laughs> this is where the stewards bring the food from the galleys. Which reminds me, I, uh, loved having breakfast with you, Archie. Anytime. Um, first thing a secret agent learns is don't risk any more than you have to. So I'll take it from here. All right. But if you get caught, just tell him you were hungry and we're looking for the galley. Will a good captain buy that? No, but what can he do? That's what I'm worried about.
Did you find anything? On the next cruise, don't smoke. Machine guns, ammunition, bazookas, grenades. You name it, it's all there. Enough to start World War III. Very interesting, Archie. It is Thomas Mumford, however, who will have to tell us what is really going on when he is found. There's no question it's Mumford. We ran a check on the prince. He drowned? The lungs are full of salt water. That usually means drowning. Mind if I take a look at the body? Uh, go ahead. Any uh, footprints where you found him, drag marks? Nothing. Any notion where he went into the water? There's one possibility, but it's reaching. So reach. A tanker, the Star of Ceylon, left port this morning at 448. Mumford's body was washed up around 6. From just outside the entrance channel, the tide could have carried the body onto the rocks in that time. The tanker flies the flag of the East Wind Lines. Harold East? I said it's a reach. Hey, Doc. What's this on the left arm? Look, I didn't get that far. Now, if you'll allow me to get on with uh, it. Uh, it could be a burn. Well, looks like a cigarette, maybe. Uh, Mumford didn't smoke. Inspector Kramer, Goodwin can curl up with the autopsy report for the entire night after I finished it. But right now, I'd like to get back to my work, OK? Come on. Uh, could I get a look at Mumford's clothes? Lamar, show Goodwin the clothes Mumford was wearing. on the left forearm, just where the burn was on the arm. Goodwin, if something burned the skin on his arm, then it's highly possible that it would have first burned through the shirt. I take it, Archie, that you do not accept the idea that Harold East had Mumford thrown overboard from one of his tankers, huh? It's too obvious. Harold East isn't that dumb. Yes. Unless he wanted to do something so obvious that we would never believe it. Cleverness masked by stupidity. Anyway, it all has something to do with the munitions on the quest. Then we must have our answer before she leaves for the Caribbean tonight. The burn on Mumford's arm. If it was not a cigarette, what was it? I have a notion, Archie. There is, I believe, one thing that might make a similar burn. If I am correct, it could provide us with the answer we are seeking. Mr. Wolf is expecting me. Come in, please. I'll tell him you're here, sir. It's either a brilliant deduction or it's so far off the wall you couldn't hit it with a fly swatter. I prefer brilliant. Dress warmly, Archie. Mr. Armand, sir. Show him in, Fritz. Come in, Mr. Roman. Please sit down. Thank you. I'm sorry to say I have bad news for you, sir. The body has positively been identified as Thomas Mumford's. How did it happen? Apparently, he drowned. Indications were that he'd been dead hardly more than an hour. I've been advised there was a tanker from the East Wind Lines in the vicinity. No, I don't think Errol East would go that far. Against me, maybe, but to kill an innocent man. Well, you're not certain it was Mr. East, but the evidence does point in his direction. Mr. Wolf. Mumford disappeared a week ago. Why would East wait until now to kill him? Perhaps he didn't find him until yesterday. But as I said, it may not have been Harold East. 
But then who? Possibly someone very close to you. Close to me? Not even breakfast this time? I owe you one. Where's Captain Anteros? On the bridge. I told him you were coming to say goodbye. Thanks. Now, what's in the gallery? Only food, I hope. Clean up cabins 12 and 14. It's about your freezing to death, Mr. Goodwin! Mr. Orman's not aboard yet. He just called. He is coming by helicopter. ahead. One third. Stop your engines. You better do as he says. There's a Coast Guard boat approaching on your starboard quarter. Take him ashore. Where's Goodwin? He was headed for the galley. Well, let's go. Is he breathing? I don't know. Let's get him out of here. Get some blankets. How do you feel? Fine. Just break me into cubes. Drop me in the nearest highball. Come in, please. Why don't you sit down? Inspector? Well, Archie, I gather you proved my theory. The hard way. I don't understand. Where is Captain Anteros? In custody. Anteros? Yeah, that will be Mr. East. Oh, you mean to arrest him, of course. Has Captain Anteros confessed his part in it? Was he working for East? Anteros is demanding a lawyer. He isn't confessing anything. Mr. Harold East, sir. And a policeman. Thank you, Sergeant. You can wait outside. I know what you're trying to pin on me, Wolf. You and Goodwin here. But just trying to prove I had anything to do with Mumford's death. Mr. Kramer, would you bring in the prisoner, please? Just to make it perfectly clear to all of you, all that has happened concerns the Santa Rico oil contracts. I've got that locked up tight, my friend. With the military hunter, Mr. East. But you forgot there was a civil war going on. Civil war? 
Bunch of barefoot idiots with machetes. Congratulations, Inspector. He's the guy that tried to wipe me out with his car. If I wanted to kill you, you'd be dead. I was hired to scare you, that's all. And to tell you to see what you dug up. The parking lot incident I will accept as a simple scare tactic. I will not forgive you, however, for what you did to my orchids, sir. Oh, what about the knock on the head after he killed Kelsey? I killed nobody. Kelsey was there when I got there. I found him just like you did. All I wanted was what was in your camera. You are a three-time loser, sir. Consider carefully, therefore, before you answer. Who else was in the building the night Kelsey was killed? Mr. Kramer, I assume that you will be willing to speak to the district attorney if this gentleman became cooperative? No promises, but I'll talk to him. Well, whom did you see? Mr. Ormond. That's ridiculous. How did you recognize Mr. Ormond? Recognize him. <laughs> he hired me. Nicky. He's lying. Why would I hire him? To establish an alibi, Mr. Roman. To prove that someone was out to stop us from getting information on Thomas Mumford. And that someone was made to look like Harold East. You even had this house shot up with yourself in it. To prove you were a potential victim of Mr. East, along with Archie Goodwin and my staff. Then Nicky Orman killed Mumford? According to our friend here, Mr. Mumford died when two scuba divers took him from the ship the night he came to see Mr. Ormond. It's impossible. It was over a week ago. Mumford died yesterday. Exactly. That is what we were meant to think. Captain Anteros, following Mr. Ormond's instructions, kept the body in the ship's freezer all the way to Bermuda and back. Mr. Ormond then arranged the phone call from Thomas Mumford, pieced together from tapes of the previous conversations he'd had with him to prove he was alive. And then when you were ready, sir, you had his body dropped in the water in the vicinity of an east wind tanker. Naturally, the police concluded he had drowned the day before, which would lead them to Mr. East. I didn't think he had the sense or the guts to plan all that, but why? Because his ship's hold contains an armory of weapons and ammunition destined for the Santa Rico guerrillas. Your barefoot idiots with machetes, Mr. East, would have become a powerful army, and they would have disposed of the junta and your contract. Blood for oil. The classic trade-off, eh? And the winner, Mr. Ormond. Mr. Mumford discovered the plan. He was troubled by it, made a date on the phone with his employer, and he was killed because he had a conscience. When Martin Kelsey found out, he wanted a piece of the action. So he went, too. All right, Orman, let's go. Just a moment, Mr. Orman. With all you had, more than anyone could possibly hope to accumulate in a lifetime. Why? Because when you grow up dirt poor, in a fishing village infested by rats, there is always the hunger for more. I assure you, Inspector, that Miss Elton had no knowledge of Mr. Roman's activities. She'll still have to sign a deposition. No, well, there's nothing to it. Yeah, it's just a few questions and a statement in your own words. That doesn't sound too painful. I still have the unused half of a ticket to Paris. Goodwin, bring it down to the precinct. I shall see you out, Inspector. After you, sir. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Paris. So you're traveling again. No, Paris is where I think best. Who knows? I may even decide travel's overrated. Well, if you do, maybe you'll take one last trip back here. I'll think about it, Archie. I promise. Bye. Hmm. 
satisfactory.